Okay, it's 10 o'clock, so I will start letting the audience in and then I will begin in just one minute. Good morning, everyone. We will just wait one more minute as we wait for some people to come through from the from the waiting room and then we will make a start. Okay, good morning everyone. Hello and welcome to our Soilus Farming, the Future of Food event. We're delighted to have you join us this morning to learn about this innovative farming technique and how through our seed to stall projects in Burkina Faso, this method is providing women in urban areas with the opportunity to farm despite the challenges of access to land and climate change. My name is Harriet Irwin and I am the Development Officer for Shared Interest Foundation. I'm delighted this morning to be joined by three speakers who you will hear from over the next 40 minutes or so. So the first is Kodro Kokochi. Kodro is the foundation manager based in Accra in Ghana. Then we have Dr. Salifu Uudrago. Uh, Salifu is the head of the Institute of Rural Development at the Naziboni University in Bobo Dialasso in Burkina Faso. And the university has provided us with technical support um, to our projects in that region. And finally, we have Isaka Smonde. Isaka is one of the founders and the current president of PNCB. PNCB is the network of fair trade organizations in Burkina Faso and our lead project delivery partner. Um, both, Isa uh, both Salifu and Isaka are from Burkina Faso and so their first language is French, but they have prepared their presentations today in English. Uh, so following the presentations, there will be an opportunity to ask any questions you might have to any of our speakers. And so please feel free to submit your questions at any point throughout the presentations using the Q&A function, which you will see at the bottom of the screen. And we will aim to, as at, aim to answer as many as we can at the end. Uh, this event is being recorded and will be also available on our website. And so I will now pass over to Kodro to start the event. Hello everyone, and thank you once again for joining us for today's event organized by Shared Interest Foundation uh, as part of activities to mark this year's Fair Trade Fortnight. As many of you uh, might be aware, Shared Interest Foundation is an international development charity based in Newcastle in the Northeast of England. For close to two decades, Shared Interest Foundation has been supporting smaller, uh, smallholder producer businesses across Africa and Latin America to build strong and sustainable businesses. We design and deliver uh, projects that address critical developmental issues or challenges facing producer groups and their communities. 
Our project cuts across a number of thematic areas, and these include climate change and environmental protection, youth skill development, women, economic and social empowerment, access to finance, enterprise development, and agriculture productivity. Through our project, we aim to contribute to the uh, attainment of some key sustainable development goals, and these include goal one, no poverty, goal five, gender equality, goal eight, decent work and economic growth, goal 13, action, climate action, and finally goal 17, partnership for the goals. We currently have a portfolio of 12 active projects being implemented in six countries. We have two projects currently um, being delivered in Ghana. We have four in Burkina Faso, which include our soilless farming that um, the speakers will be talking about. We have a project in Burkina, uh, in Ivory Coast, one project in Peru. Uh, we have one project in Uganda, and then we have also three projects in uh, Rwanda. So over the past year, shared interest uh, with the support of donors and grant making bodies has been able to deliver 12 projects in seven countries. And we provided training to over 2000 farmers in areas such as good agriculture practices, climate smart agriculture, agribusiness management, compost production, and pest and disease control. Uh, we are now in the process of launching two new projects, um, maybe the next month. Uh, which is going to focus on an agroforestry in Uganda and one that will deal with um, deforestation in uh, Rwanda. At this point, I'm going to hand over to uh, Dr. Uh, Salifu uh, from the University of Naziboni, who is going to talk about how limited access to land and climate change are really impacting food production in Sub-Saharan Africa. So Dr. Salifu, uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, dear Kodzo. Can I share my screen if you stop sharing? Yeah. Is it okay? It's perfect, thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to my presentation, uh, which is about uh, uh, this uh, event is the webinar on soil farming system. My name is uh, Dr. Salifu Wedraogo. I am from the University of Bobo, and uh, we are involved in one of uh, the project financed by Share Interest Foundation. We are providing technical support. So we are pleased to share uh, information about impact of climate change and limit access to agriculture, uh, to agricultural uh, regional food production, and how does soil farming, soil less farming technique address some of these challenges in Africa. Well, welcome. In French, we say, soyez la bienvenue. And uh, in uh, three, uh, our three main local languages, we have the more, we say, ne waongo, and in full, full day, we say, fofo. And in Jula, it is a dance. It's really a big pleasure for us to have this opportunity uh, to share some of the information about soilless farming systems in Burkina Faso, in Africa in general, and in Burkina Faso particularly. And uh, before I go deeper, I think I will apologize for my French English uh, because you know we are in. Uh, French speaking country. So my this is the outline of my presentation. It is uh, first the introduction. We will uh, talk about the impact of climate change in Burkina. 
then the advantages of soil less farming in Africa. Uh, we cannot continue without talking about soil less farming practices. We will not uh, uh, try to give a kind of uh, a how far soil less farming is, the technical organization. We can find all those information uh, everywhere, but uh, we really would like to share the practices, experience in Sahelian Africa countries. And then also share some challenge and limitation we also know here in Africa and uh, at the end, the conclusion. Uh, as introduction, we will begin by saying that the, the great challenge uh, for all of us in the world is how to sustain it sustainably feed the rapidly growing world population. And uh, quickly, we can think that one of the solution will be by increasing sustainable production in areas of high population growth. But however, the reality is quite different because of many factors, uh, among which we can talk about the traditional non adapted techniques of agricultural production in our countries. Uh, some uh, factors of uh, uh, some factors like they are new, like uh, the climate change resulting in land degradation, uh, the limited availability of land, particularly for women and youth, for some time cultural uh, reasons, and uh, some social issues, including war. We know now. So regarding all those factors, we can say that. Uh, one of the solution and suitable alternative can be the soilless farming. Uh, the, chale the, the, chale the, the climate changes in Sahelian region of West Africa. When we are talking about climate change, we can also show some of the, the problem uh, or Firstly, some uh, element we show that uh, there is really an impact of climate change in Sahel, uh, Sahel region of West Africa. Among those things who show this climate change, we have an unreliable rainfall pattern. And now we, it is really very, very seen in our uh, regions. We have excessive temperature variation. Uh, we know it now. For instance, uh, late in the night, you can have uh, 17 degree, 18 degree, and in daytime, you can uh, have up till 45 degrees and sometime more. And there is also high competition for natural resources. And the consequences of this uh, climate change uh, among we can talk about many consequences among which we can talk about the decrease in soil fertility, the decrease in productivity of uh, cereals or agricultural production, the increased food security, more vulnerable population. Uh, we have also more harmful human action on the environment. More there is difficulties more the environment also will feel the impact of human actions. We have also more difficulties in accessing land. And all those things uh, bring us to uh, what we call uh, to result, uh, it amplify the instability in Africa with some more actions I think many of you knows already. The climate change uh, pose a major uh, uh, the climate change now in this region uh, poses a major potential to the viability of rural household in sub-Saharan Africa that rely primarily on natural resources. This is uh, almost uh, in all the sub-Saharan countries. According to the World Food Program in Burkina Faso, we 
have uh, many people in this concerned by those consequences. For instance, we have 3.3 million people who, who are facing acquit food insecurity. Agriculture also is the main source of income of more than 80% uh, of the population. However, Burkina Faso is a food deficit country. This is a little bit, a little bit the reverse picture of what we have with developed countries, where around 5% of the population produce for all and even export. And uh, in, in our countries, you have more, uh, about 8% uh, or more than 8% producing, but even with this, we cannot uh, uh, sufficiently produce for all the population. And uh, 1.3 million internally displaced people uh, are, are known in Burkina Faso uh, now. Uh, soilless farming, uh, in short, we can say that since the soilless farming uh, is appeared as uh, an alternative and a solution for to produce more and uh, to feed uh, all those people in our countries, we can say that soilless farming is a technique, we can define it as a technique that allow plants to grow outside the soil using a substrate, substrate and essential nutrient for its development. Soilless farming is used to facilitate production in hostile environment, for example, excessive salt in, uh, salt in soil, toxicity or lack of agricultural cities, and so on. We have more, many kind of uh, places we can use uh, to produce uh, using the soilless farming system. The, soil, the, soil, uh, the soilless uh, farming can be done also. Uh, some of the advantage is we can do it, we can practice it anywhere. We can also, uh, it can be done by everyone. And also it can be done for all, as I mean, human and animals. Some of the advantages also are that uh, the soilless agriculture or uh, the soilless farming is easily mobilized people uh, for the produ agricultural production. It is also adapted uh, table according to the localities and up till now, it is open and is an open field for creative genius. A production is faster, greater, and more environmentally friendly than conventional soil-based farming. Uh, this uh, soilless farming it offers more possibility to control also the quality of farm product. And we know that now, a big challenge in our countries are also uh, is also the the bad quality of uh, farm product uh, which are offered to the population. With soilless farming, we can uh, really uh, control more the quality. Uh, as practices in uh, sub-Saharan Africa countries, uh, we here would like to show that people are really. Uh, 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 involved are men are really involved in this uh, soilless farming system and uh, they are using uh, from uh, some uh, bad quality uh, recipient to the high quality recipient so you can have all uh, all those kind of uh, recipient use uh, to 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 in this uh, soilless farming for instance you have empty cut industrial oil kind. You have, uh, they use also some old tires as a recipient. Uh, some use plastic bottles and uh, also uh, some empty large kind of tomato uh, box are used. Uh, on top of this, uh, when we are uh, moving to the sophisticated one, you, some you are used also the, the allowed out bamboo stems. Some people also use uh, the empty uh, cut barrels. Well, they even use empty cereal bags uh, to, 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 to contain the substrate. They also use the plastic uh, bucket. And 
those are the variety of uh, recipient they use uh, from the low lower lower uh, quality one to the uh, adapted and sophisticated recipient uh, such as for instance uh, boxes made from re re reclaimed wood and uh, uh, industrial uh, plastic bag uh, which are sometimes uh, industrially produced and uh, sell and out of those uh, uh, recipient we also can talk about a, a type of uh, substrate uh, they use and uh, the most substrates available on the locality are also used uh, we show the adaptability uh, in the soil less farming in Africa. Uh, most of people use uh, the sun, the clean sun, uh, to make potting soil uh, to be used in the recipient as substrate. Uh, on top of those uh, substrate, they also use peanut shell as substrate. And uh, out of the peanut shell, uh, they also shell, they use also wood chips, wood chips and sometimes the clean gravel or stone uh, which they can uh, find everywhere and the best uh, and uh, uh, the one which is advised to be used is the coconut wool or fiber and which is really uh, more used in the very good systems in soil less farming and out of those uh, substrate we have the model of nutrient use and uh, uh, as we are in the bioproduction bio and uh, agroecological uh, approaches uh, we are advising uh, people who are really involved in the soilless farming they mainly use organic fertilizer uh, which contain a trust element for uh, the, the plant they also uh, use some uh, liquid fertilizer or biofertilizer and uh, many, main, mainly they produce by themselves. And uh, today you have a lot of training uh, related to those uh, biofertilizers. And here we would like to show that uh, the soilless farming uh, really, those pictures are here to show that the soilless farming in Africa uh, concern mainly women and youth. And those people are the most important part of the population in these countries. And they occupy, uh, when we take the pyramid of the population, the women and youth occupy the bars, the base of the pyramid. And this uh, soil less farming uh, concern uh, really them. So it means uh, it gives hope for improving the agricultural production in Africa. Uh, whatever uh, the advantages and also the hope this soil uh, less farming uh, gives to, for, to, to us in Africa, there are some uh, challenges uh, which still need uh, investment uh, in terms of money, in terms of training, in terms of knowledge. For instance, the system need at the beginning high initial installation and uh, the, the maintenance cost and the secondly the soil less farming uh, use a, a technology and uh, this need uh, to be it means that for the using of this technology we really need to train uh, the farmers farmers require a specialist training and uh, what, uh, the third thing is also uh, challenge is also some substrates are not biodegradable. Uh, this means that uh, we require we still require a further research uh, to solve this problem. And at the last, the low consumer knowledge of benefit of organic produce. Uh, I mean, uh, when we 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 use soilless farming uh, in general, uh, we have good product and uh, organic product uh, produced uh, from this system. And those products need uh, more uh, money, uh, more benefit. Uh, so people really, we have to invest or to do some actions which will uh, 
uh, inform people that they should be aware of paying a little bit more for good product and they should uh, really have knowledge uh, about the benefit of organic product. At the end, uh, at the conclusion, I can say that soilless agricultural solve the problem of access to land uh, for women and for youth mainly, and it enable community to make the most of space not used for conventional agriculture in urban and peri-urban areas, which can really improve uh, the production and the possibility of production. Soilless farming can be established at all outdoor residential space, including balconies, roof, and pavo area. It is also necessary when the quality of the soil at your disposal leaves something to be desired or when it is contaminated. Soilless agriculture or farming favor to appearance of new actor in agriculture. Uh, those people are women and young people, especially those with more education. Uh, since we have more and more people who are educated and they are not getting a, a governmental job, they are really converted automatically with entrepreneurship training to a soilless farming. For more effort is needed to improve the level of understanding and mastering of soilless farming techniques in sub-Saharan Africa. And this is why uh, people as us from the university are also happy uh, to be involved in the such uh, pro project as, uh, uh, as uh, uh, providing a technical support and being also a, a part of those actors who are involved in this uh, soilless uh, farming in Africa because it gives hope and it can help to really uh, feed all those people uh, that uh, percent rate of, uh, of, of growing is really high. Thank a lot for following my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Salafu. That was excellent. And I think has set the context nicely for our next speaker, who is Isaka, who will talk more about our projects in Burkina Faso. So if you were able to stop sharing, and now Isaka, if you were able to unmute yourself and turn your camera on and, and start sharing your presentation. Perfect. Sorry, I'm coming. Happen. I think you might want to just go back a few slides just so it starts on the, the title page. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Morning, everybody. First of all, um, let me thank very much Sharon and Therese for allowing me to present myself and to present the PNCB and the project. Uh, let's say that I'm Somane Isaka, the president of the National Fair Trade Network in Burkina Faso. Uh, this network was uh, created in 2010. Uh, it gathered all the fair trade actors in Burkina Faso. And we have about 20, 34 uh, association members of this network. And Grafe, Grafe is the woman association which cover about 10, 18 uh, groupings. And the main activity of the, this association is uh, to look for income activity for their members. And one of the mission of the, our network, PNCB, is to, to look for training for its member and also look for funding for its member activities. It is in this way that we contact Share Interest Foundation and get a financing for the this project, which we are going to talk about. 
Dr. Salifu has uh, already talked about the challenge in Burkina Faso, but I'm going to, to go more about it before talking about our project. What is the project? The project uh, funding by Shared Interest Foundation is a soulless farming for women. But this project is to increase sustainability through the production of organic vegetable using soilless farming methods. Uh, why this project? As Ms. Dr. Salva has said that in Burkina Faso, there are many challenges, challenges for women and youth. Women are not able to access to land because of the traditional barriers. And we think that our project is come to solve this problem. So the, pro pro the project is going to, to, to increase the income of 230 women members of GAFRE, GAFRE through the year-round production of organic vegetable. Another objective of our project is to increase local availability of nutritious food, contributing to increase local food security. It also going to support GAFRE to establish a sustainable soilless farming enterprise. As I, as I said before, the problem is that there is a negative impact of climate change in our production in Burkina Faso. Because our production is strongly depend to the rain. In Burkina Faso, we are one, a two, two, two season, one rain season and the wet season. And in Burkina Faso, let's, let's say that uh, our agriculture is depending on climate vagary. When the farmers are sowing and the rain stop or come in excess, there is always a bad harvest. We have no control or certainly. So solace agriculture is an, alter uh, an alternative to control production and fight against hunger. So uh, to accept to so this problem can help us to solve the problem as I have said. And also women is uh, limited to economic opportunity. I mean to, to, to have activity which can give them an income an income. So one of the, the objective of this uh, project is to fund income activity for women member of uh, GAFRE. Uh, if you see GAFRE is uh, in Bobo de Lasso, uh, one of the, uh, this, I think it's the second town of Burkina Faso. And there to have land for women to produce is a challenge. So through, through this project, we have many activities to achieve our objective. One of the on one of the activity, let's say that during the, the the implementation of this activity, all the community are committed. committed. We have regional and local authorities who were committed during the launch of this. Um, this project, we have University Nazi Bonu, where uh, Dr. Salk is from. We have uh, the, the agricultural, agricultural Training Center of Matutu. So this engagement, this commitment of all the community is to show the importance of the project. To show also the, the, the importance of this project, the, um, the town hall of Bobo de Lasso are offered a land to Gafre to, impl to, impl to implement the project. So, uh, and during the, the training, all the women member of Gafre was veritably involved in the training. And also uh, the, the, the regional um, authorities were also involved in to help Gafre 
uh, and to show the availability to support the success of this project. So uh, to, to enumerate the, the activities of the projects, we can notice that we have a function of, pro of production. So we have a, a site of about 2,000 2000 plot of land donated by the local uh, municipality of Obojilasu. So after the, the training, we have the construction of the greenhouse. This greenhouse is the place where we can make I'm sorry. And after the, the, the greenhouse, the women have been trained, trained, and the train is delivered by agribusiness, Badwa International Base in Wadu. And this, this train cover all all space of soil soilless production, including the preparation of the substrates, the planting techniques, nursery bed management, traceability management of organic productions, production of liquid organic fertilizer. Uh, that, uh, the role of the substrates is to provide support to the plant as it grows. It not give a uh, subnutrition to the to the plant, but it support it. So the substrate does not provide, as I said, nutrition to plants. The substrate is made using locally sourced material. We use some time, um, peanut shells, natural fruit for the outer skunks or coconuts. And to permit to allow the plants to grow very well. We have liquid fertilizer that is added to in the water in, o, in, o, in order to allow the plants to grow very well and to provide the requirement nutrition for the plants. As I said in during the beginning, uh, this project is for two two thirty women, but the two two. 200 women is working together, but the third woman is working individually. Okay. So, two, two thirty women receive training in liquid fertilizer production. And they produce using locally available material, such as poultry droppings, green grass, wood ash, and water. And this all is mixed to, in order to obtain, to have the, to have the fertilizer in liquid. And what, how to use it? In order to use it, we have one liter of fertilizer is mixed with 15 or 20 liter of water to dilute before application of the crops. Yeah, this is how the fertilizer is used. Uh, after the, the training, I think it is, we have the, I'm sorry. After the, the training of uh, how to, 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 to prepare the fertilizer, the liquid fertilizer, we have, we have the growth of first harvest. And uh, in this uh, greenhouse, it, we intend to produce uh, paper, tomatoes, and uh, another an, another crops, and uh, we our our production now we have to we will produce about two uh, I'm sorry. Okay. 
So uh, we predicted annual pollution of tomato about 33,000 kilograms. And we have also peppers, but I will, I will go come back to this prediction after. And uh, I, I, had, I said that we have 230 women has been formed, but the 200 women will work together in the greenhouse. Up to this, we have 30 women provide with production kits to grow vegetables using soilless method on small piece or land around their home. That is individually production, production, sorry. And we have been also trained and give equipment to, to practice this activity. And this equipment includes substrate, seed, organic fertilizer, shed net, and nursery tree. The domestic production of organic vegetables. Vegetables are grown in sacks, packets, and over available containers. I think Dr. Dr. Vidrago during his presentation showed us some pictures where the, the vegetable is produced. And this activity will contribute to, to contribute to to household food security because one part of this uh, production will be sold in order to allow the woman to have money to have income activity but also contribute to the family food security uh, the market access or the, the access to the market women produce and sell as a collective. Gaffrey, are, Gaffrey is responsible for connecting to the market. So Gaffrey will, will look for the market for the women to sell the order with local university restaurant. So also already Gaffrey has many contacts with buyers. We have restaurants, we have markets, we have uh, the individual, and crop also sold on the local market from Gaffrey shop and directly from the greenhouse. That is in the greenhouse because people come to visit the greenhouse and this during the visiting, they are told on the, the, the decides to, to buy to buy tomatoes on a, or another vegetable. I mean, um, last time, the member of PLCB was visiting the greenhouse and uh, many of them uh, bought uh, some crops there. And um, another activity plan for, for this activity is the marketing plan. So we will develop, uh, will be a development of distribution site. Purchase to, in the coming day, I think, Kafri will have a motorbike and trailer for this distribution. Uh, she will also pro produce a left, 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 and other promotional material. This all to 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 invite us people to consume its product, and also uh, another another way to promote the product. This activity, the uh, PNCB has a website, and we can put. And I think it is already done. The, um, the activities of Gaffrey, the product of the Gaffrey on this website in order to allow people to know that there is something is doing there and we have uh, a good product in our area to, to sell. We have also the WhatsApp groups, including another, another group to promote these activities. And um, one of the impacts of the project, we have two, three areas. We have many uh, impact. We say that this impact, we have a social impact of this activity of Gaffrey. Why social impact? The reduction in level of employment of men. Women feel more empowered and have increased their status in the community. Local food security has increased. Social, because 
if you have nothing to do, you are not uh, respect, you are not a concern in your society. But through this activity, women is able, the women are able to, to satisfy the needs of uh, the family. And, so, and since they have money, they can also satisfy the need of the children, schooling the children, or buying food for children, and so on. We have also economic impacts. The economic impact is that the activity generates income for Dafri to enable them to continue supporting vulnerable women. As you, doctor, has said in Burkina Faso, we have displaced people uh, all over the country. And one of the, uh, the, the activity of Gafre is to, to help those women to have some things to eat or to have some things to do. So the, 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 the generated income of this activity can allow Gafre uh, to support this vulnerable women and uh, income for the participant to increase household resilience. And uh, add, add to the add to the, the add to the add to the environmental uh, we, we have also envir environmental uh, 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 impact uh, because farming is organic so so no half people are used production method does not display natural economy. And the fact, also the fact of using uh, the solar system contribute to, 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 reduce, uh, to, to reduce greenhouse gas emission. This is what I have to say about the project, to highlight the project, I think we can go deeper during some questions. Thank you, thank you. Thank I think you, my doctor. presentation is over. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for being so long. <laughs> Not at all, Isaka. It's very interesting. Thank you. And um, if okay. you want to stop sharing your screen, and then if oh. I can ask um, Kodro and Dr. Salifu to turn their cameras back on, and we will start the question and a session. Uh, we've had a okay. number of of really interesting questions through. Um, so I will I will start now. I know Isaka, in your presentation, there were a couple of slides that didn't show properly, particularly with the, the borehole and the seedlings. Oh. And we've had okay. a question about um, access to water for the producers at the greenhouse. So maybe Isaka and, and Kodro, if you wanted to, to just go a little bit more into detail about the provision that we've made to ensure that there is water access for this project. Okay, I will I will ask the contribution of Mr. Kodjo to to, to, to to add something because uh, I was so too, so fast and um, since he know that very well the project he can ask he can ask some information to the assistants. Thank you, Mr. Kujo, for, for backing me. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Um, uh, yes, access to water, uh, what we did, uh, first of all, was to drill a borehole uh, because access to water in the community is really a challenge. They depend on the government grid to have access to water which does not flow regularly. They only have access to water once or twice a week flowing through the taps. So we drill a borehole to provide access to water for the Soles farm. Um, so we also erected a reservoir, which was powered with uh, solar panels so that we don't use um, the normal electricity because we wanted the project to really be environmentally friendly. So we avoid using the normal electricity. We are using solar panels to power the pumps that actually pump the water into the reservoir. Uh, in addition, we have established what we call a drip irrigation system uh, that provide the right quantity of volume of water to the crop mm -hmm. at the right time. Mm -hmm. So this is the system that we are using to provide uh, uh, access to water to the vegetable farms in the greenhouses. Thank you. And you can add that the, this water can benefit also to the community, not only for the, the vegetable. Um, thank you both. And so we've had another question about the liquid organic fertilizer. So 
We mentioned the ingredients that are used to make the fertilizer. Um, there's been a question about the availability of the poultry manure. Um, do the producers keep their own poultry? Is that easily accessible? And also the green grass that's used. Um, where does the grass come from? Uh, okay. The, the, the manure are coming from poultry and small ruminant and also cattle. And uh, about the biomass, uh, the, green, the green biomass uh, is coming from vegetable, uh, in many kind of vegetables. Uh, the, availability, the availability of vegetables uh, varies uh, depending of season. Uh, if it is in rainy season, you can easily get the green uh, vegetable. And if it is not rainy season, you can get the green fresh vegetable from trees, or you can also get them from uh, uh, washed legumes. You know, we have market market for legumes. So there are some parts which are not used. So people collect those fresh vegetable instead of burning or throwing them away, they use it to produce a uh, liquid bio fertilizers. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Salifu. Um, Thank you. And so we've had a question just about the kind of crops that can be grown using this technique and what will be specifically grown um, within the project. So Isaka, do you want to talk about some of the different types of vegetables that can be grown um, or that will be grown through this project? Is it me or Somande? Mr. Kojo, can you uh, repeat this question for us? Yeah, she want to know the type of vegetables that we are growing in the greenhouses. Okay. We are, we are peppers, cucumber, eggplant, um, lettuce, we are cabbage, okra, green bean and uh, i think that is the the main crops main vegetable we produce in the greenhouse but i can also add uh, that uh, we can really uh, uh, produce uh, any 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 vegetable and any tree and but it depends on the rentability yes there are some uh, uh, kind which are not uh, you cannot get benefit to get benefit it will really take very long time and uh, very uh, too much investment so people now the one he cited are those who are quickly they can use them uh, easily and get benefit easily yeah so otherwise you can grow everything you want in those uh, kind of green green greenhouse okay and uh, and what I'm saying now is uh, only in the green house of Gaffrey. But yeah, uh, yeah. as as Thank doctor you. has said, we can create every every face. And so we've had a question. Thank you both. We've had a question about the predicted volume of crops that you will be able to grow in the greenhouse on the land donated um, by the governor, and also a question about that land. How long has that land been donated for, or has it been given permanently over to the Gaffer Group? Um, the land has been donated by the local the local authority. But it is forever, I think. It is forever. It is not uh, located, but it is forever. It is donated forever. As as long they can continue the activities, the land will yes. be for them. Yeah. Okay. So it is a uh, it is donated during all the 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 life of the project, uh, life of the activities. Activities has long they can use and produce. Okay. Okay. They okay. Keep it forever. And and do you have a predicted volume for the crops that will be grown? Yeah. Probably. Let me step in here and say that uh, currently we have two greenhouses. Um, on the land donated 
but the land can take up to 10 greenhouses. So yes. that would give us an idea of what volume of vegetable we can produce. Because this is a first pilot, and yes. already uh, we have over 33,000 kilograms of tomato produced in only one of the greenhouses. Yes. So when you multiply that by 10 greenhouses, you can see the projection as to how many more tomato or what volume of tomato we could get uh, in a season from all 10 greenhouses if they are put into full uh, utilization. And there exactly. are other crops as well that they are growing, so with different uh, production volumes. So it will be difficult to estimate for all the crops uh, how much volume we are going to get, but it's possible exactly. we can get it out. Exactly. exactly. Okay. And we've had a question about um, kind of market access, product uptake. Um, we know that these are premium vegetables um, that have a, a highly perishable. So how, what mechanisms will be put in place to ensure that that market access is there and to reduce any potential waste? So maybe this is something that Isaac could, could talk about, but also Dr. Salifu, you can contribute if you if you would like. If I if I have any truth, uh, I don't want to know that the, the, to ensure the market. Is it okay? Yes. Yeah, so how how have we? What mechanisms will be put in place to ensure that the vegetables will be sold and to reduce the waste as much as possible? Yes, as I I said in the, my presentation, Gaffrey had all already contract. Uh, contact some 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 restaurants and some people and some small uh, small reseller resell, uh, to to sell his vegetable and we have also uh, the website of the PNCB the network we put uh, some some pictures of the tomato some information uh, in the website and whenever you, you visit our website, you know that we can have a good uh, vegetable to, to, to pay. And also, uh, GAFRE has developed a system of uh, marketing. Yeah. So uh, during the, the meeting, the workshop, and if so, GAFRE go anywhere, he go to try to, to make people know that Will have can have a good vegetable uh, to to pay. So there are many activities. Many activities are done to make know that there is a vegetable produced by Gaffrey, and people will know where to have it. Yeah, I don't know if I have, I have made my, my myself understood. Yeah, I think uh, I can uh, also confirm that uh, what he said is really true. Uh, for instance, uh, when they had the first uh, harvest, they tried to make some small pack uh, for people. It's like to introduce the product to, to those who really can pay uh, the product. And I myself, I received one pack and I also made a feedback to them as uh, saying that their products are really very good. Okay. And uh, we, we, we propose to also uh, be part of helping them to sell. So we will, every time if there is harvest, we will uh, give the information in the university. We have around uh, 500 workers. So we ask them uh, if so they will need uh, some a quantity everyone who is interested will write and precise the volume, the quantity he would like to have, and we okay. send to them. So at the harvest time, they will, uh, they will uh, give this to those people. Uh, to say that they are really uh, using all the market strategies to sell uh, the product, and I yeah. believe uh, they will be able to sell. Thanks. I would like, I would like, I would like to add that during the General Assembly, of the PNCB next uh, last week, they came. Gaffrey came there with the, the, the tomatoes to show people, and uh, many people uh, buy some tomatoes. Me, 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 myself, I buy from for five thousand, five thousand, 
and the contact also many hotels and the restaurant to to make know the existence of their products. Yeah. Let me quickly add that also there is something interesting that um, the project is doing. They produce when there is scarcity of that vegetable on the market because it is all year round production. They plan the planting calendar to actually coincide with the time that the traditional farming system does not produce that type, particular type of crop. So it is in high demand and they are able to supply the population at that particular uh, point in time. And uh, from uh, our side, I mean, the side of the university providing technical support, we are also preparing some training on uh, transformation and also storage in case. And we will train, uh, we will give those training to GAFRE members. Thank you. And so I'm conscious of the time. So I'm just going to ask one final question, which I think um, could be asked to all three of you, which is about kind of the, the sustainability of this project, the sustainability of this technique, how scalable is it? And also, are there more women at Gaffrey who would like to be involved in this project? Um, so that's a question I think for, for, for all three of you, but maybe to start with you, Isaka, are there more women at Gaffrey who, if the resources were there, would like to participate in this project? Maybe we have I haven't get the question. I don't know if it is addressed for to me or to Sumande. So I asked Isaka just about um, are there more women at Gafra who would like, if the resources were available, would like to participate in this project? Of course, of course. I think there are there are other many women uh, who would like to be involved in this project. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because now we have two, 230 women, but Gaffrey, the, the member of Gaffrey is uh, about 2,000 2, women. So many of them are demanding, they want to have, want to, they are very interested in this project. So the demand is very lot. That's right. You see, we have, just... only, we have only two, 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 230. But the member is about six 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 thousand women, so the demand is very. And I I can I can confirm that the demand are, is really very high. Uh, yes, when they yes. were training, when they were training uh, women, uh, they asked the university to provide two two women who can participate to this training, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we had uh, big difficulties to find it those was, two women. Oh, okay. Because I, I tried to propose uh, my wife and the rector of the university say, no, there are more, uh, you, uh, uh, there, are, there are other uh, women who, need, who really need it compared to my wife. And uh, my okay. wife is still waiting another, another uh, training program to be involved. Okay. So there, really, there is need. Uh, okay. You have even the, the, there is a, an association of women in the university, and they would like uh, to be trained, and they, are, they were not selected. We, we select uh, uh, women from the village where we have the university. So we still have a lot of women waiting to be yes. involved in the program. <laughs> yes, and as I said last time, we, we, the member of the PNCB visits this, this place, but they asked me, what can what what shared interest foundation can do for the other members in yeah, exactly. the other locality and the other locality, not yeah. only in Bobodila so but so that is to say that everybody everybody is very we are all interested all the members all the the women are interested in uh, this project. And so finally, maybe from yourself, Kodro um, or Isaka, just to talk a little bit about. The sustainability and the plans for this project going forward. So, so where do we hope that this project will maybe be in one year time, in two years time? Yeah, this project is the first of its kind in the region. Yes. Uh, I think uh, in the whole country, we have two, one in Ouagadougou and the second one in Bobo. Mm -hmm. uh, so the plan actually is to, uh, over time, make 
um, the, the center become a center for training of women and youth in soilless farming. And also we are trying to promote the domestic production where every woman at home should be able to produce vegetable using the soilless farming technique. So once the women are able to assimilate the technique, they can even pass it on to other women uh, who will also produce at home. So in terms of sustainability, once they have the knowledge and they have the basic equipment and a small space of land, they are able uh, to uh, produce a vegetable. Uh, it is something that uh, PNCB and Gaffrey are looking at uh, expanding in the whole region and probably that will be the way to go for the country since um, traditional agriculture is becoming yes. more and more difficult. Access to land is becoming a challenge. So that seems to be the way forward in order to promote uh, food security uh, in the country. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And I think, so I, think, I, I, think yeah. I have no, not, nothing to add to this. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, OK, well, I, we've gone five minutes over, um, but there was a lot of really interesting questions. So thank you for your time and thank you to everyone who also attended. Um, particularly to you, Saka, and Dr. Salifu, I think um, had a very good response to your presentations. Everyone's found them very interesting and love to, to learn more about this soilless technique and also about the, the realities and challenges of farming in Burkina Faso. So thank you both for your time and your contribution. Um, and I hope you will have an have a excellent rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you thank for you giving too. chance to us to have this nice exercise. Thank yes. You. <laughs> thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for backing our people. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>